Hello, I am Dr. Mary Jo Ruggieri, and I'm a holistic health professional. And welcome to Staying Well with Dr. Mary Jo. Let's talk about herbs, herbology, the benefits of herbs. Unbelievable. This next series that we are going to present to you are called Herbs for Life. And this is profound because non-invasive, they are popular, they are becoming you know, fashionable in many cases, no side effects. Very rare do you find any side effects with herbal medicine and herbal health care. So we are going to present to you a series of herbal education and with our master herbalist, Harula Dentopoulos, she is part of the Institute of Holistic Health Careers faculty, and our herbal educator, Letitia Bungie. Have you wondered if you could have just even a whole idea of herbs? We're going to talk about herbs for digestion, herbs for the liver, herbs for the colon issues, anti-inflammatory, colds and immune systems. Everyone knows, oh, I'm going to get echinacea, I'm going to get golden seal. But let's talk to the professionals about this. Herbs for the nervous system. So please enjoy the next series on Herbs for Life and staying well with Dr. Mary Jo. Thank you. And hello again. Uh, my name is Harula Dontopoulos. I'm an herbalist. Uh, and uh, we've been talking about the digestive system. We did the liver earlier on and then the, uh, the, the, um, the stomach. And today we're going to actually talk a little bit about the colon. Thanks. I'm Letitia Bungie. And I want to mention one thing about the colon before I go into its digestive part is that it's also a, a major center of our immune system because of payers patches. So that's another reason that good care of the colon is important. Also, as we mentioned in an earlier segment, the enteric brain, which is the brain that controls the digestion, centers in the colon. There are actually as many neurotransmitters and nerve cells in the colon as there are in the brain. Now many of you know already that um, diseases and conditions like Crohn's, irritable bowel syndrome, et cetera, which uh, originate in the colon or the small intestine um, are largely due to stress. And relieving the stress and coating the tissues is something that's very, very important. And I would just like to say that I did work with a client who had irritable bowel syndrome and she definitely used some of the herbs we'll be talking about but the thing that was best, worked best for her was simply real lemon, a real lemon squeezed in water in the morning that helped with all of her irritable bowel syndrome um, uh, issues. And uh, Harula will tell you about the other herbs that are important. Yeah, but I also wanted to say that sometimes the simpler solution is the better and uh, the best. And lemon comes in handy for cleansing, for balancing the acidity in the system because it's really alkaline. And so, you know, that's why it had such an effect on your client. It balances, it, it, it cools down the acidity that comes from very rich foods. So, uh, herbs that are good for the colon are mucilages, again, carminatives, and also relaxants because of the connection to the nervous system. Yes. Uh, mucilages are specific chemicals in the herbs that uh, create that uh, Sliminess that we see with flax seeds and um, stuff, you know, like the flax seeds, if you put them in water, they, 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 they form a little gel around them. Well, those are the mucilages, and we have some wonderful mucilages that coat the stomach, coat the colon, and produce a wonderful healing effect. The first one I'm going to talk about is marshmallow, and actually I have the leaves of a marshmallow. You can also have the root. You can also use the root. Uh, the root is mucilaginous as well. It's not a bitter like some of the other herbs we've been discussing the last couple of weeks. So this is uh, marshmallow, and the marshmallow, it's cooling, meaning it's an anti-inflammatory. It works wonderfully to uh, relax and uh, cool down and, you know, help tissues. It works with spasms in the colon. Um, the marshmallow plant grows in sort of swampy conditions in nature, and that kind of talks to its quality of having a lot of water in the plant, the root, the leaves, everything, the flowers, and it's that water that creates the mucilage that can actually cool down inflammatory conditions. It's a lot of fluid. 
In Europe, it's totally approved for any kind of gastroenteritis um, by the Germany Commission and for ulcers. And of course, it's also good for a lot of other things like kidney and um, you know, kidney inflammation, bladder inflammation, urinary tract inflammations. Um, now, this is best extracted in yes, what, Leticia? in cold water. In cold water. Right, because otherwise you don't have as much mucilage. So cold water just means put the, um, the root or the leaves, correct, right. in cold, cold water for a, at least an hour in order to extra extract the mucilage. And you'll see, it'll be slimy, mm -hmm. and that's what you want. Right. And that, that applies to a lot of other herbs, like, for instance, slippery elm. And all I could bring you today is just the leaves of the slippery elm. It is a magnificent tree that was extinct for a long time, and it started uh, its comeback. And what we use from the slippery elm is the inner bark. And the bark also, if you put it in water for an hour, maybe even two hours because it's a bark, it will also create that sliminess that is indicative of mucilages. Um, it is also a moistening herb. It is soothing uh, to the colon, to other organs as well, anti-inflammatory. It heats any kind of ulcerated tissues uh, that show up sometimes like in colonoscopies. Um, and very fast, very quick, uh, gets rid of spastic colon and any pain in that area. You can combine it with the marshmallow and with other um, similar type herbs. And some of the other herbs that um, uh, we've talked already about that are good for the colon are definitely chamomile as an analgesic, um, an antispasmodic, and also peppermint, very good as a carminative to uh, induce, I mean, release, uh, help release gas. And then some, also some nervines because of the, um, the connection with the nervous system here. And we'll be talking about those in the in following segment ne next uh, couple of weeks. But basically stuff like valerian, skullcap, hops, all of those are some nervines that might um, affect the nervous system and thereby, and the stress in the system and thereby help the color. So that's it for today. Yes. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much. And uh, again, stay well with herbs. And we'll be talking to you again next week. Yes, come back for more.